I believe that if we are honest with ourselves, that the most fascinating problem in the world is who am I? What do you mean? What do you feel when you say the word I? I myself. I don't think there can be any more fascinating preoccupation than that because it's so mysterious, it's so elusive. Because what you are in your inmost being escapes your examination in rather the same way that you can't look directly into your own eyes without using a mirror, you can't bite your own teeth, you can't taste your own tongue, and you can't touch the tip of this finger with the tip of this finger. And that's why there's always an element of profound mystery in the problem of who we are. This problem has fascinated me for many years and I've made many inquiries. What do you mean by the word I? And there is a certain consensus about this, a certain agreement especially among people who live in Western civilization. Most of us feel I, ego, myself, my source of consciousness, to be a center of awareness and of a source of action that resides in the middle of a bag of skin. And so, we have what I have called the conception of ourselves as a skin encapsulated ego. Now it's very funny how we use the word I if we just refer to common speech. We are not accustomed to say I am a body. We rather say I have a body. We don't say I beat my heart in the same way as we say, I walk, I think, I talk. We feel that our heart beats itself, and that has nothing very much to do with I. In other words, we don't regard I myself as identical with our whole physical organism. We regard it as something inside it. And most Western people locate their ego inside their heads. You are somewhere between your eyes and between your ears, and the rest of you dangles from that point of reference. So in the same way, we have really the idea of ourselves as a little man inside our heads who has earphones on, which bring messages from the ears, and who has a television set in front of him, which brings messages from the eyes, and all sorts of uh, electrode things that are all over his body, giving him signals from the hands and so on, and he has a panel in front of him with buttons and dials and things, and so he more or less controls the body, but he isn't the same as the body, because I am in charge of what are called the voluntary actions and what are called involuntary actions of the body, they happen to me. I am pushed around by them, but to some extent also I can push my body around. This, I have concluded, is the ordinary, average conception of what is oneself.